All right. Hi, Larry. Hi, Cheryl. Hi, Chineri. Uh, this is Max Rimmelheim. Uh, thank you for so much for coming uh, on Vonvo.com today. Uh, I just wanted to go over two quick things before we get our discussion started regarding the Boston Marathon bombing. Um, the first is that right now this conversation is being recorded, and after the recording is completed, we'll be uploading this video to the internet to our YouTube channel. Is that okay with both with all three of you? Yeah. That's fine. Okay, great. And then on top of that, uh, here at Vonvo, we're all about our conversations staying both civil and valuable. We don't want there to be any personal attacks against uh, anyone. Uh, are you guys fine with that as well? Yeah. Yep. Okay, great. So, okay, great. So then uh, let's get our conversation started. Just for all the people who are watching this video right now, um, would the speakers just mind giving a quick background of yourself and why you're so passionate about this discussion? And we can go uh, Larry, then Cheryl, and then uh, Chineri. Well, I'm a journalist. I uh, have been for several decades. Uh, started out in broadcasting. I was on radio for about 20 years. And started uh, more narrowly defined my fields over the last uh, 10 years or so. I wrote about technology for a while. Right now, I'm, I'm primarily a film journalist, independent film. Uh, but, like I said, I, I have a background, general reporting and, and uh, just news overall in general. So, uh, I've and I've been involved in politics. So, um, if that gives me any any uh, qualifications to uh, entitle me to discuss this topic, uh, I think, I hope I've got that. Cool. And what I, I was just going to say, uh, Cheryl and then Chineri, before you give your background, I think someone might have a TV on. If they could just, like, maybe lower that a bit, that would be good. Uh, if you're All right, gonna, okay, I think it might be me. All right. If you could just lower it a little okay. bit or turn it off, whatever you want. Yeah. It's just here in the background for the turn video's purposes. All right, Cheryl, you can... I'm, just, I'm hearing yeah, Cheryl, and you can go ahead and uh, you know give a quick background of yourself. I know you've appeared on Vonvo in the past, but go ahead. Um, I uh, I'm a Southern conservative woman, a mom, a former politician. Don't worry, I've been cured. <laughs> and uh, the, the reason that I'm so <laughs> the reason excuse me, I was eating salad. The reason I'm so passionate about this is that, above and beyond the, the atrocities of what took place in the last four days, I had a family member who actually ran in that race. And when I first heard any inkling of this, it was on Twitter, and I thought that it was some type of, of you know, sick joke on Twitter because people that were sitting around me said, oh, there's nothing on any of the, the media, the major news outlets, only kind of to come and find out, in fact, it was true. So, during those horrifying moments, and, and, and my family members were, were fine, and, and, and uh, when I let logic take over, I knew that she finished the race uh, well ahead of time. I, I, was, I was just very... I, I didn't, there are no words to describe what happened on that day. So I can't, I can't even imagine how those who lost lives or who were actually physically there when I was you know, hundreds and hundreds of miles away. So I, I um, that's, that's why I'm somewhat passionate about this discussion. And I'm hoping right. that the discussion can stay a little more on topic. Right. And so uh, go ahead, Chinari. Uh, Okay. Hi. Um, I don't, I'm not particularly an expert in anything. I'm actually a student right now, and I'm studying politics. But um, the reason why I'm really passionate about this Boston bombing is because I feel like America has gotten so much attention when there's so other, so many things happening happening around that it's just deviated from. Pakistan is deviated from Bahrain, is devi deviated from Syria and everything. And I just feel like we need to go back to the basics. We need to go back to the people that need the attention rather than America itself. So that's why I'm here. Okay, great. So, I mean, we can we can obviously, you can, you know, definitely, in, you know, uh, integrate that sort of, uh, those sorts of comments by all means into this discussion. But just to kind of be on point, 
uh, in terms of the immediate, you know, beginning of the conversation. So, Larry, when this, you know, uh, attack sort of took place, I mean, what was your initial feelings? And now knowing what's kind of, you know, taken place in terms of the whole manhunt and everything, I mean, what's your sort of overall take on this event and how it's, you know, impacting uh, or how it's going to impact the country now going forward? Well, I don't want to monopolize the conversation. I could go on for hours about it. Like I said, I am a journalist, and, and so what I've been doing over the last several days, more than anything, is reporting the story as best I can uh, with the sources I have and, and trying to spread the word about what's been happening as opposed to the analysis. Although I've done that you know, on, on my own Facebook and with friends and family, and, and so I've had extensive discussions that have literally gone on for hours and hours about what's happening. Uh, and there's everything from the way the media handled it to, uh, to the actual crime itself, to uh, what, what's going to happen with, with this guy that they caught, to uh, how he turned into a terrorist. I mean, there are just so many different topics. Do we want to pick one and, and stick to that one? Because I don't want to just go on for hours. Yeah, I mean, Cheryl, you, you had your discussion earlier today, so do you, do you like any of those suggestions? Is there one that maybe uh, you would like to focus on that you didn't get to cover as much uh, earlier today? Uh, I, can, I concur. I, I think that we need to focus on one or, or two um, issues as it pertains to the, the box bombing. And you're correct. I mean, we discussed this a little um, earlier today. <laughs> and I mean, it's a great conversation, but we, we found ourselves often going off topic and difficult to, be, to come back to topic. And it's not to minimize what we're discussing at the time, because there is there were certain aspects in, of that were relative. It's just that uh, we started talking about the, the offshoot and not the marathon itself. So... Um, might I suggest that we collectively decide on a topic within the, the within the marathon itself, and, or a specific issue within the marathon, and try to keep it there, opposed to I mean, reference the offshoots because obviously there, there's so many facets of this uh, uh, situation. Right. What say you? Right. No, that's 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 definitely more than fine. So I mean, I think what would be interesting to cover would be, um, you know, sort of, uh, you know, what what's what's basically you know bound to take place next after this, um, you know, past three four days that have happened because it's pretty self explanatory what's gone on, um, but now maybe sort of you know the, the outlook of the future. Going forward, um, you know, uh, Chinari, what what are your thoughts on how um, this will now impact uh, the country going forward, uh, looking kind of into the future with with this recent event? Um, I think the way it has been handled and how they've tackled finding the bombers and all that stuff, it, it gives a boost to America because right now I know there's a lot of especially in Nigeria right now they are looking at America like oh they've had they tackled it so well that they want to take how they how they manage to handle the situations they would like to kind of copy that in case for the future so I think it will make America it will make the whole of America look good even though it was a bad situation if you understand what I mean ah. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, so, that's so basically, topic. yeah, yeah. The you know the fact that the FBI, well, the uh, law enforcement got yeah. these guys Fine, within right? within four days, and it's basically yeah. over, as opposed to this endless weeks, months, years that it could have gone on before capturing them. That's a great point. Yeah. That's a fantastic point. It's an excellent topic for discussion. I I might um, I, I might uh, preface. Uh, the beginning of the conversation, going with that, <clears throat> is that this is the first time in the history of the United States, the history of the United States, that a
Disney was not shut down um, at, at no time in the history. Uh, for for a non-weather. So, not, non I mean, not even not even weather. I mean, there were, there is nothing. Not even not even San Francisco's fires, earthquakes. Cities still ran, and they, and people had the ability to move about. Uh, that the, the the citizens of Boston, without the force of government saying you're in martial law, we're in essence in martial law, and they they listened. They they and and it is, yeah, I think the most frightening aspect is that it was a, a nineteen year old that ultimately shut down Boston, and that in itself, I mean, if you, is is pretty scary. That we did it in four days, and uh, to your point, that that other countries will, will be looking towards us, or have been, that um, in a positive way is uh, an excellent discussion. So yeah, that's and I of all the different ideas that have been swirling around this, that's the well, I love I've, this one. That's the first time I've ever heard that. Yeah, I, I, that's a, a perfect, wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> but um, I wanted to pick up on your point when you mentioned um, a 19-year-old boy had kind of like put Boston to standstill. Um, I was looking at his kind of background because you know, once you're in the media, you get everything about you is put in the media. Found his Twitter and all that stuff, and I was looking at the kind of person he would have been aside from being a bumble or whatever. And he seemed like such a normal 19-year-old boy, a 19-year-old boy that was studying medicine to become a nurse that wanted to save lives. And I couldn't put, I see no correlation in wanting to save lives to then wanting to bomb someone and wanting to bomb a marathon that's going to be filled with different people, kids, all these kind of things. Where is the correlation between that? That's what I don't understand personally. This is for me. This has actually been the number one topic of discussion for me among my friends and family for the last six hours since early this morning. Uh, the, the, the basic consensus among the people I've spoken to is, is this was a, quote, normal kid. Uh, there was no indication of any you know, Islamic extremism on his part, either uh, vocally to his friends or on his uh, social media accounts. Uh, he didn't seem to have any anti-Americanism. Uh, for all we know, he, he came over here. He was he was integrated into this society. He was a good kid. He was on the high school wrestling team. Uh, he went to the prom. All his teammates and classmates said he was a sweet guy. He was compassionate and friendly. He went to the Model UN with this girl who talked about him as being wonderful. Uh, he was taking college courses. He was going to parties. Uh, there was nothing to indicate that he would have had any uh, sense of anger. That's, to some extent, what, what most people agree on. So the question yeah. is what turned him. And again, I, I think a lot of people agree that, uh, in essence, he was his, he loved his brother. He looked up to him. And like a lot of younger brothers, he was mentored by him. Uh, to some extent, the feeling is he uh, must have been for the lack of a better word, brainwashed by his older brother. Now, the older brother, that's how the older brother got into this this frame of mind is another story. But let's just say the older brother somehow at point became this extremist, whether it's for the Chechen cause or for the Islamic cause. Uh, that's That somehow he then talked his brother into it or brainwashed his little brother into doing it. Uh, that's, that's one angle. There's another, there's a drug angle which is to some extent that uh, almost almost like a date rape drug that his his older brother was was giving him drugs and then talking him into doing something like this and and that that in essence changed his personality which which drugs can do to some extent uh, to to make him head in this direction there's there's not a lot that we know yet about that and hopefully we'll find out it's one of the reasons I was happy that he was taken alive because we need to find out how can this happen because we haven't seen this we haven't seen this happen where he was not a loner and he he, he didn't have these didn't seem to have these strong political views and, and he he wasn't this you know anti-american 
Islamic extremists with with these with the Chechen separatist uh, background in his in his uh, discussions with anybody. So so yeah, that's a good question. And my feeling is basically that that's that he was brainwashed by his older brother. Uh, there, have you guys seen the movie American History X? Are you no. familiar with that? No. But but basically, well, it's, it's like the DC sniper, where you had this kid who who looked up to this this older guy and, and just hmm. just got caught up in what was going on, yeah. where he where he wouldn't otherwise have done something like that on his own. And this is not to excuse what he did or defend him yeah. in any way. But that, but you know, that goes to the psychology um, of you know, when you bring up the DC um, sniper. It goes, it goes directly to his his family life and his lack of, of um, anyone positive, and so when uh, when and, and in the same case, probably. I mean, think about it. Uh, they were both teenagers, both in, uh, impressionable, both uh, somewhat. I mean, shy and. Just, this seems to be the consensus with the the, the uh, bomber in, in Boston, also. So um, you have this strong person who's saying, "I mean, you have self worth, and I believe you." But in a really demented, um, a demented way, and, uh, and and they'll believe this because no one else did. He, he, in the past. he was vulnerable and right. ripe for recruitment into a cult. As was, the, as, as was the DC bomber. I mean, DC right. uh, sniper. And right. So it's, a, it's the same. It's the same reason that you know a, a neo-Nazi skinhead group goes to the Greyhound bus terminal because they know they're going to find kids who are at that point in their life where they're not sure what they want to do and they're questioning and they're ripe. They're easy picking. And where is in the past? We had we had a family structure beyond the mom and dad, aunt, and then we were a, we're a highly mobile society, so we lose that connection. And uh, I don't know if we can ever get that back. But uh, if we if we were still in that mindset that the families were really that important, um, an aunt or an uncle or a cousin would have said, may have noticed or said something or or just befriended him them a little more in using the both of those uh, uh, young boys as an example. And I, I'm sure, Larry, <laughs> that you have re also read um, the Younger's uh, uh, Twitter account. And on April 8th, he, he tweeted a very prolific, I mean, this was, when I they read it, up, yeah. I... Now, when I read it, I had goosebumps. I'm sorry. Could you just excuse me for a second? I'm about to go check something. Just for a second. Yeah, sure. I'm sorry. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, I, I read that. And <laughs> I, 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 I was frightened. I was beyond frightened. But, but that wasn't part of a pattern. I mean, yes, there were a couple sorry. of tweets that, there were a couple of tweets that could be interpreted as, as, uh, bellwethers for something like this, but but it wasn't part of a pattern. It, he he didn't have weeks and months and years of of these of these weird you know, of these negative tweets that could be interpreted in, in, right, in I, a way. Yeah, absolutely. And, and so was, I agree. I don't think there's enough there. I still don't. I still wouldn't consider that evidence that he was heading in this kind of a direction. Oh, no, 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 no. A, I just thought. Yeah. As a, in reflection, reading it. Yeah. Um, As opposed to some kid who shoots up the school and he's got journals and he's got drawings and and you know and, and he's written and he in his diary on his there. on his computer uh, about you know wanting to kill everybody. We we don't see that. We don't know what's on this kid's computer yet. But we, at this point, we don't see a background, a pattern. Um, we don't see a, a a lot of evidence that that he was heading in this direction. I, and I agree with you. There, there doesn't, there is not at this time. And people who knew him casually said that he was a nice, you know, a nice right. enough person. Never saw any of this. Whereas conversely, they, it has been alleged that his brother um, had issues with 
the behavior and I mean, uh, it was either assault and battery or <clears throat> it was um, a, domestic, a domestic issue. Um, but it, that in and of itself doesn't, doesn't, it's not an indicator that he would have done something. No, and we know that the older brother was also questioned by the FBI a couple of years yeah, and, ago. Right, and, and it was found at the at behest, I believe, of a foreign government. Of Russia, um, Russia, we believe. Right. Yeah. And and um, I mean, we're we're all passionate, and if every every time a someone said something incredibly passionate or wrote an article about passion, I. It all being real. I mean, it, right. it's just it, it 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 is a very difficult. Um, it's very difficult to ascertain without a complete history. I mean, often there are people who come out of the woodwork that uh, oh, this person uh, you know he had a history. Well, he didn't have a history. He spoke to a psychiatrist a couple of times because he went off the wall a little bit. Yeah. If you add up ev all of the evidence. Then people are pointing fingers, but the the, the singular evidences are um, not there. And now I'm right. going to just run for one second because I have to shut up uh, an alarm off. Hold on. All right, well, we can talk. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to rush. No, you, well, you've been listening to what we're saying. Uh, yeah. Do you have any any thoughts on on what we're, we've been discussing so far? Well, um, there was something that Cheryl spoke about, one of his tweets or something like that. And I wanted to I wanted to say that at the end of the day, I think as a teenager myself and him being a teenager, we can tweet so many different things. I may tweet something that would be considered as very extremist, but doesn't make me extremist at the end of the day. There was a tweet I saw from him where he mentioned how um, we are either indoctrinated by the media or something along those lines. And resonated in me where it's like now he's in a situation that he's hunted by the media, hunted by the FBI. And it's just, I, I found it so, I just find it so weird. I Honestly, in my personal view, I can't, I can't take the idea that he did something like this. I can't take the idea that his brother put him up into something like this. Because there are so many different stories by different newspapers where I, I need one concrete evidence to say that he did th he did it. That's what I need at the moment. Well, we're we're all armchair quarterbacking. You know, we're we're looking, uh, hmm. but I think ultimately, I think we can all agree that that this is to some extent a first in that in that this kid does not have a history. There's not a whole lot of evidence. He doesn't fit the profile that we normally see when when we get somebody who's done something like this and we can and that's the scary thing because it means that anybody anybody you know could could end up doing something like this and that i think that's that's the scary part of it <laughs> yeah unfortunately it lies in every single person i mean the, the that switch at any given moment to be turned off, and your ability to reason with with reality, be it a, be an older brother or uh, an issue. I mean, it, it's there. It, it, it exists, and, right. and it's unfortunate. And, and what what I what often happens is that 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 inner I'm going to use a phraseology. <clears throat> well, I use the word snap. Morals, morals. Well, yeah. snap, but th that moral compass somehow becomes skewed. Right. Well, yeah. There's another angle, and I don't know the, his psychiatric history, but mm -hmm. somebody who's on meds, who's well controlled by them. Who, who's on a maintenance plan and, and is essentially uh, functioning, quote, quote, normally, goes off their meds, and that, and they snap, and they almost become a different person. There's, there's a lot of, there's history of that happening, uh, and I'm not saying that's happening here, but it's another, it's yeah. something to think about. Something to okay. think about.
Um, I have a question. Um, I wanted to know what are your opinions and how the um, the FBI and the police and how they handled trying to find him? Because I was watching it live yesterday and it's, it was around like one a.m. for me in London, and the way they were like I was hearing that there was fire. They were trying to put fire in the boats. That they were trying to smoke him out. They had the flashbangs. Well, there's so many different stories. So, what were your opinions? The flashbangs that you're referencing, that those are mechanisms that the police, yep. the FBI, it, 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 it's actually to yep. frighten him, or, or, or that, 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 that's the purpose. Them, yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, confuse, frighten, um, but uh, I think that the Boston police, the finest, did an incredible incredible job you know. uh, the FBI an excellent job they they refrained from buying into the media I need to know and did exactly what they were supposed to do we're going to tell you the information when we want to and we will not be driven by your overconsumption need to direct this I mean to the point where they were actually saying go back a couple of blocks and stop tweeting I, mean, it came up, I think, it, yeah, get away and stop tweeting where we are. I mean, it, 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 and I think the most oh, telling the one was, yeah. oh, that's scan. Yeah. But the, I think one of the telling thing is, is um, I think it was Hammer. Hammer that was, it was, and he goes, I just got a message saying, you know, safety, whatever it was. How did they get my email? You're in Boston? That's. That last info went out to anyone who had a cell phone, and if you don't think that they couldn't do it, that was, I mean, that was just, they need to understand that that, that it, well, I go on a I, dancing process. Yeah. I, I have two main, main uh, thoughts on, on what you asked. Number one is, <coughs> as a result of 9 11, mm -hmm. we created a joint terrorist. JTTF. And what this did was it combined the local police, which was Boston, and then it was Watertown and, and, and the, the community surrounding Boston, the state police, the FBI, ATF. You had all these different agents sharing information. That never used to happen. There was uh, all this jurisdictional uh, politics that, that used to go on, where every, every agency wanted to take credit. And, and they work together, and, and I think this, that's one lesson, and you mentioned earlier what other countries might learn. That's one yeah. lesson, I think, from this, is that all the different agencies, even the, the state attorney was involved. You already had the legal, the court system, the legal system, already working on what do we need to do to prosecute this. Even they found him. So you had all these agencies working together, and, and that worked well, and that's one thought. The other one was the way they reached out to the public, putting the, instead of keeping everything close to the best, uh, and maybe they, they distanced themselves from the media to some extent, but they did just the opposite with the public. They wanted people engaged. They put those videos out there. They put those pictures out there. They said, please help us. Uh, you know, ask your friends. They really, they really reached out, which it was, in a way, uh, in a way, very, uh, just, I, it, to some extent, it was they were letting their egos down. They, they were That's saying, exactly. look, we, exactly. we can't do it all, and, and, and please, and you can help us, which, which I thought was, was absolutely wonderful, and in the end, that's what, that's what did it, it as far, it, at least at the very end, in the end game, it was, it was this guy who, who called 911 because he saw that his boat had been tampered with and he saw blood. So so not to diminish the work of the law enforcement, which was amazing, but to some extent it was it was the public and their reaching out uh, which helped solve this, at least well, to get us to the point we're at now. And, it, yeah. and it's very unique. Yeah. The Boston Ball, I mean, is, is very unique in, in that hilarious point. The different agencies put aside their egos, put aside who's going to who's going to catch this guy, who's going to get the credit, 
and instead they collectively, and one of the you know, reasons, of course, is the task force, mm -hmm. they thought of what is best for America, what is best for the citizens of Boston, what is best for the citizens of, uh, uh, in, in that entire area, and, and we have a singular mission. Right. To capture him and to capture him alive. And um, I, I want him also. They had swung yeah. all the way through already, had been through that area, and that the Ooh. homeowner, the cousin of the a homeowner, noticed something after they had been through. It uh, and it went very quickly after that. So uh, my hats are clearly off. That um, no no one wanted to be the got to. Exactly. Uh, we did it. It was we 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 we're going to work as a, this great unit. We're going to utilize all of our assets, and we will take that win as a win for all of America, not just a specific agency. And my hands right. go off to them a hundred percent. And not often have we seen this in the past. And I, and I mentioned some agencies, and, and I, I don't want to leave out, obviously, it can't be all-inclusive. But I want, to, I want to mention the transit police also, because not only did they contribute, but they had uh, an officer injured in the line of duty in the course of this process. So I just wanted to throw that out there also. Okay. But, but then why was it the same? You said the mission was to capture the bomber alive and they, we all worked collectively in helping capture him. But why wasn't the same mission applied to the first bomber in the, in the first place? Because I read an article that stated that 200 rounds had been set off to uh, between them, the first bomber and the police force. So why wasn't the same mission applied going to capture him alive if he influenced his younger brother? I think, I think the, it was. The, I, there was no question yeah. that, that it was. It was the yeah. mission from the very beginning. You, I, the, um, I mean, we did. They did not know. Uh, um, I'm speaking in generally because I, I would not presume to know everything that they know. But they did mm -hmm. not. They didn't have the specific information like they did after the the bomber was uh, uh, deceased. I mean, they, they were. They relied heavily, they relied on the public helping them to, one, asking who the bombers were, and then to search for them. So I, the same effort took place prior to the, uh, the, the, the death of the first bomber, as did the second part. I think that it intensified because they had already lost a, a witness. And they desperately wanted to make sure that the second bomber um, that they identified at that time was going to be captured alive. And so the mission remained the same. It's just the urgency maybe changed a bit. I agree with Cheryl. Also, when they first engaged the two of them, they were under attack. Uh, the the we. One or both of them were throwing bombs at them. We're, we're not only firing at them, but we're throwing explosives. So the first priority is not to take anyone alive. The first pri well, the first priority is to save themselves. The first priority is you defend yourself. And and so in that moment, the police had to fire back, uh, and and they ended up killing the the, the first uh, suspect. By the time they got to the second suspect, he wasn't really engaging with them. Now, they say he was firing at them, but he was in a boat. He was essentially hidden. At that point, the police had a much better position and, and were much more uh, likely to be able to get him alive, uh, And which is what happened. And the, uh, in the end, it was the FBI that went in, their hostage team, a SWAT team, that just attacked the boat. And, and basically, at that point, uh, they were able to take him alive. But, but I, think, I think first priority, when the police are, are trying to get somebody uh, it, above wanting to get them alive, is, is wanting to save their own lives. Right. And making and sure that... Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and safety. I mean, safety, not only... You have to, um, I, I might note that when that firefight 
occurred, as Larry, Larry mentioned, and they had already stolen a vehicle, kidnapped someone, uh, and there but the grace of God, it was let free. I'm going to say that now. Um, and that they were, they were attacking. I mean, they were throwing, um, actually, hand grenades. Well, I don't know where they got those. I don't know. And, and that, that's something that was said in the press. So I don't know the, the factual, but I, they were throwing, yeah. uh, they were throwing homemade IEDs. I mean, they were throwing all of these. They were attacking. So really, when you review the tape, the police restrained themselves until they started uh, being attacked and Quite frankly, I think that they, they were within their rights to defend themselves and all of the citizens that were around there. Right. Right. It's because of it as as war. You know, in a battle where troops are engaging, uh, uh, yeah, you want to take the enemy uh, as prisoners, and maybe you can get information. But when you're in a battle, you're you're fighting for your life, and you are trying to kill them because they're trying to kill you. If you happen to get them in a position where, hey, we can get this guy alive, we can save our own lives and we can save his life and get him to talk, then that's advantageous. But also, as Cheryl pointed out, they were not 100% certain when hmm. the first firefight took place that those were the bombing suspects. They didn't know that for sure. Once the first suspect was killed, and then they were able to get more information and see what they looked like, uh, and and the the uh, carjacking uh, uh, victim said that had admitted to him that they were the bombers, then they were pretty much 100% certain that they were the guys. And again, like Cheryl said, that ramped it up a little bit uh, as far as wanting to get uh, the second guy alive. Yeah. Right. Uh -oh. There's a comment here that, that reads from um, Domingo that says something about the younger brother running over the first brother. Is that is that factual information? Because I saw it rotating all around Twitter, every social media, that the younger brother ran over the first brother. But how, why, is it true? He, yeah, he, he was down. He, he had been shot, he was on the ground, he was down. Whether or not the, the younger brother knew that he was running over him or yeah, not, uh, I I don't think it's you know if I don't think it's if, pertinent to the conversation really yeah, whether he did it, or not. I, yeah, I, I know it sounds horrific, but right. um, in the it, heat it gives of battle, people an excuse. Yeah, it gives people a, an excuse yeah. to say, "Oh, he's a horrible guy. He ran over his brother." He <laughs> probably didn't. Yeah. Either he didn't. But I mean, you, you have to understand. Uh, there, what brief. Over 300 rounds um, at that point, and they're throwing uh, 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 bombs, and I'm using a generic term, out the window towards them. I mean, this is what this is the heat of battle. So, and and the brother was wearing a vest, a bomb vest. I mean, they, one could argue that the intent was to stop the bombs when he ran over him, if he knew about it. The other side is, and please not everyone go ballistic on this, uh, about the illness that I just studied, that he may have, he may have done it with intent, but I think that he probably didn't even know. He, he's mm. trying to, he's trying to, he's trying to get away. So, it probably, it, the first time he found out about something like that, and the, you know, the, the authorities may have put that out to the, everyone in hopes that the young boy, man, 19-year-old, heard that. And he mm -hmm. would be so devastated and remorseful that maybe he wouldn't do anything more. I mean, we, we're dealing with the psychology of a 19-year-old who no longer has the leader. And, and so that's another could be. There's also the fact that it's very clear that the, the older brother did I not intend to live through this. He had explosives strapped to himself. Right. He was the martyr here. He was the suicide bomber. He was the one who, who wanted to die, who intended to die. Clearly, the younger brother did not. Um, and again, this is wild speculation, but you know, you know, we've seen suicide packs, let's say, where somebody will say, uh, you know, 
Yeah, uh, I want to die. Uh, hmm. If the police are coming after me, you know, kill me first, kind of a thing. The younger brother knew that his older brother was, if he wasn't dead already, he was going to die. Which, hmm. I mean, it's still horrific if if it ran over him, knowing he was running over him. But but it, but he knew in his mind he wasn't he wasn't killing his older brother 